record. Amen. Met, uh, Sister Tracy Lynn Bryant, hear the word of the Lord through her. Amen. Go ahead, Sister Tracy. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Moore. Thank you for that prayer. I thank God for this day. I thank you for the message that he gave me. I thank, I'm also thankful for just being a vessel and I'm humbly submitting myself to his Holy Spirit. And I'm, I'm also thankful I see some family members on the line. I also see just some good friends that I know have been praying for me. So I'm really, really grateful. Thank you. So I'm going to be coming tonight from Psalm 91 verses 1 through 3. And the word of the Lord our God reads, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him, I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Thank you God for your living word. Psalm 91 is one of those scriptures that has become um, increasingly familiar with us, especially since the onset of the pandemic. It's become familiar for obvious reasons. First of all, it mentions an actual plague. You can look in it and see the things that we might be experiencing right now. It talks about the perilous pestilence. It talks about we might see a thousand fall at this side or a thousand fall at that side, but it not coming near us. But it also gives us comfort. It talks about um, dwelling in the secret place. It talks about angels angels being given charge, they're on assignment to just watch over you, to keep you, and it promises us um, that God will deliver us, that yes, there might be trouble, but God will be with you in it, and he will deliver you, and it's it's been very um, close to my heart lately for this reason and a number of other reasons. It's, it's kind of like a security blanket for me. You know, when the world feels cold, I just kind of go to song. 91 and wrap myself in it and until I'm comforted again until I'm encouraged again and up, uplifted again and so recently when I was reading it there was something different that stood out to me a lot of times if we kind of run to the the whole perilous plague part of it but it was something different about verse three that stood out to me uh, where it says surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And it was something about the word snare that just kind of lit up in a way that let me know, hey, you're, you're wrapping this blanket, this security blanket around you because this is snare related. And I got, I got excited and curious at the same time because I knew that what was on the other side of this was some type of breakthrough, some type of deliverance. So I approached it with childlike curiosity and it led me to this topic, the making of a snare, but God. So that's my topic tonight, the making of a snare, but God. So it was really important for me to like start from scratch as I was approaching this. I didn't want to assume that I knew anything, even though some of the translations say, uh, some of your translations might say for Psalm 91 verse 3, surely he shall deliver you from the trap of the hunter. Like in my mind, I knew that a snare was a trap, but I wanted to approach assuming nothing. So I, I thought like, what is a snare? What is a snare? And so what I found was that this, the word snare has different Hebrew meanings, you know, similar to how we have in the English language, where you can have a word that's spelled the same way, but it can have different meanings like a nail you hammer into the wall, or it could be a nail on your finger, you know, so snare was a little bit similar to that. And so I found that as it, as the word snare appears at least 60 times in the Bible, depending on which version you use. And each of those times it has at least three uh, Hebrew meanings. There were three common Hebrew meanings that kept coming up. And I just wanna go over a few. 
The first one was the Hebrew word mokeds, and that was snare meaning noose. And you know, in this country, America, we're very familiar with what a noose is in the horrific history of, of slavery and lynching. We know that a noose is the rope that has the loop on the end. And once you pull or put pressure or, or something on that loop, it begins to close and choke you know, the person out. So, so a noose, was used to describe people. People can be a type of noose. And so this was an example of this is in uh, the, in a lot found a lot in the Old Testament, but you would find it in the story of David, David and Goliath. Remember the popular story of David and Goliath where he was a boy and he, David slayed this giant and the crowd went wild and everybody's singing his praises and giving him props. But then there's Saul that's off to the side, brewing in jealousy, right? So he's looking on to David and he's thinking, wait a minute, this, this boy is my competition. He's about to take my spot. I got to do something about this. I'm, I'm going, I got to take him out. So uh, Saul says, uh, I know I will give him my daughter so she can be a snare to him. So he was talking about so she can be a noose around his neck so you know it was like whatever he knew about David we knew that David at that time was a focused military fighter he was someone that had reverence for the Lord and everything he knew about David and everything he knew about his daughter we knew that she kind of had a bit of an attitude she also had idols and you put those two together and that was a noose around David's neck that relationship was a noose around David's neck. So people could be a noose. Idols, it also talked about idols being a noose. And it also, in, in Proverbs 18, um, that same word mokez as noose was talking about our mouth can be a noose. Proverbs 18, seven says a fool's mouth can be a snare. So foolish things that we can say can end up being like a noose around our neck. So that was snare as a noose. The second Hebrew word for snare was the word pa. And that was snare meaning a trap or a net or something that is spread intentionally to try to catch somebody. So uh, examples of this, you see this a lot in the book of Psalms. Uh, David talks about uh, it a lot. Also in Psalm 119, Psalm 141, the wicked have laid a snare for me. Somebody intentionally laid a snare. So it could be physically laying a trap or also symbolically laying a trap. You might remember this in uh, the New Testament where the Pharisees, the religious leaders of, of that time, they will always try to trap Jesus with conversations, you know, starting conversations, hoping that he would say certain things to get him arrested. Um, but Jesus, our savior, he was ahead of the game. He already knew what they were going to say. He didn't even fall into that trap, you know, but they were trying to set it. Jesus, what do you think about these taxes? Jesus, what do you think about adultery? Uh, and, and, and some of that can be seen in Matthew 22, 15. And you and you've probably experienced this, you know, people might try to start conversations with you intending to trap you like let me see what she going to say let me see what he going to say, so we can, you know, trap and see what see trap them get them in a trap so that's snare as a trap. The third Hebrew meaning of the word snare was. Ketar and Ketar meaning besieged when, when, and this is usually referred to when we're talking about armies circling around and closing in. So you see that a lot in the Bible during wartime when they were going to, uh, to attack a city, they would end up circling, circling the thing and closing in. So that could be physically or it could be symbolically perhaps in life, different things in multiple areas of life. And it just feels like life is closing in. That's an example of being besieged. So these are three examples of, of how the word snare can be used as a noose, as a trap, or as being besieged or closed in on. And although they had different meanings, what they had in common 
was that they keep a person bound. They keep a person stuck. They're restricted. They can't show up 100 and be their full self. They're controlled by something. They're, they're stuck. It's a snare. It's a trap. So that was all very good background, you know, just to have in the understanding of the making of a snare, but God. So with that, you know, the making of a snare, you obviously have to consider, well, who makes the snare? The hunter, right? The hunter makes the snare. And so when I think about the hunter, this particular scripture comes to mind, 1 Peter 5 verses 8, where it says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So in studying the making of a snare, I found you could get a lot of helpful insight uh, about that particular scripture and this whole prowling around simply by observing how a hunter sets a trap. So what I did, I researched a lot of videos and I watched a, a few demonstrations of hunters that were showing people, this is how you set a trap. You know, on YouTube University, you can kind of pretty much learn how to do anything. So I'm watching these hunters uh, demo these traps, these snares, and what stood out to me was the level of observation and the level of preparation that went into this thing. And it gave me so much insight, like, not just insight to be alarmed or insight to be worried, but insight to improve how do I move out here, insight to know what to pray for, insight to maybe help me navigate things and avoid these traps like Jesus did, you know? So, so they had a high level of observation and preparation. And, and uh, with, the, with the observation, uh, it was important for them to observe because they needed to build their knowledge about, about what they were hunting. So for example, if they were hunting a groundhog or, or a rabbit or a coyote or a bird, they need to find out, well, what are their habits? What do they like? What don't they like? Are they near damp spaces, wet places, or, or dry places? Where do they frequent? Where can I find them? Where are they always at? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? Do they have any special abilities that I need to know about before I make this snare? Well, I, do they have like special teeth that can like chew through something? Maybe they have razor sharp claws because I, I don't want to put a snare out that they're just going to easily kind of get through. So all of this is going to help determine what kind of materials they will use, what kind of bait they're going to use in that snare and all also, most importantly, where they're going to place the snare, right? So in other words, this enemy that prowls around seeking whom to devour is going to be observing what are our habits? What are the good habits? What are the bad habits? Where do we spend the most time? Are we always on social media? Are we always watching a lot of TV, a lot of Netflix? Where, where do we spend the most time? Are we, do we spend a lot of time at work? Do we spend a lot of time at church? Where can we place, where can the hunter place the snare? What do we like? What don't we like? In other words, what is your type? What are your strengths, your weaknesses? What's your gifting? What's your calling? What do you struggle with? What's the flesh in the spirit battle looking like? Observations. So in addition to observation, there was the preparation side of it. And that gave some major insight. See, the hunter doesn't have this one size fits all approach to things. There has to be a difference. Uh, is, it, is, it a, is it a bird? Is it a rabbit? Is it a groundhog? All of these are going to require different things because for one trap, you may get away with using something as thin and light as dental floss. But for another trap, you're going to have to use some heavy wire. You need something strong enough to hold hold. And then for one trap, you might be able to entice the creature with, with this type of food, but for another type of, of animal, you might need a certain other kind of food. So in other words, what may be a snare to you might not be a snare to me. Are we talking about a believer or a non-believer? Are we talking about a babe in Christ or a seasoned saint? Are we talking about a busy Martha or a focused Mary? Are we talking about a doubting Thomas or a short fused Peter? All require different approaches. 
So naturally, I took all this in and I and I started looking at myself. You, I couldn't help but to begin to examine myself. That's what the word is supposed to do. We we use it to to examine ourselves and correct ourselves and 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 improve some things about our lives. So I'm looking at it and I'm looking at my life, looking at where some snares may be, looking at some good targets for snares and what are my patterns and what are my weak spots and what are my struggles and after all of that I just went right back to Psalm 91 I said you know what I I need my security blanket again let me get back to Psalm 91 and read that for comfort so again I'm reading it he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty and by the time I got to verse three I, I started feeling encouraged and uplifted again because there was a promise there surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler it wasn't a maybe he might there was promise language in there surely he shall and so I started getting excited. I started feeling like, wait a minute, you know, God, so is this like my get out of jail free card? If I find myself, somebody done put a noose on me, set a trap for me, things are closing in. I can say, wait a minute, there's a promise for that. There's a promise for that. And then God was like, wait a minute, that ain't for everybody. That ain't for everybody. So this is like my conversations with God. And so I'm like, well, who is it for, Lord? He said, that's for those who dwell in the secret place. That's for those who abide under my shadow, the almighty. That's for those who say that I am their refuge and fortress. That's for those who trust me, who trust me. And so I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So how do we get there? How do I tell the people? How do we get there? He said, you get there by drawing near, drawing near. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. That's a promise. He will draw near to you. We get there. He says, you get there by living in me, not just on Sundays or when people are looking, but living in me when it's good and when it's not so good. Live in me when you need me and when you think you don't need me. Get to know my heart. Know what breaks my heart. Know what makes me smile. Be in close relationship with me. And you get close by reading my word, by praying, by fasting, by repenting, by humbling ourselves, by praising him, by thanking him. And then after you get done doing all that, repeat it. And then after all of that, he said, now believe it. Believe that surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Don't just read it. Believe it. Believe that he loves you. Believe it. Believe it. And I love how David puts it in Psalm 124. Um, he, he gives a really good, I like to think of it as a, a testimony of being delivered from a snare. David in Psalm 124, it's like, this is David's, I was in a snare, but God's psalm. He says in verse one and two, he kind of repeats it twice. He says, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, they would have swallowed us alive. He said it twice in verse one and two. So he's letting us know only an all powerful, everywhere present, all knowing God, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, it would have been a wrap for us. We needed those resources, the all powerful resources. Logically, it didn't make sense for us to get out, but God, we got out. Have you ever been in one of those situations where it just didn't make sense, but you got out? Even people that don't believe in God are looking like that was God. I don't know how you got out, but that was God. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, then skip down to verse six. He says, blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. He's saying uh, the Lord didn't let them have their way with us. And, and notice how he said the Lord didn't give us. I'm in the Lord's hand already. He would have had to give me to you. You got to go through the Lord first to get to me. And he didn't let the prowler devour him. He didn't let the prowler devour. He wanted to tear us to shreds, but the Lord, but the Lord didn't give us as prey. So David is saying, blessed be the Lord. He's praising the Lord for that. Some of us right now owe the Lord some praise for that kind of deliverance. And then verse seven, he says, Here's where he talks about the snare. He says, 
our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. This is the New King James Version. Our soul has escaped as a snare from the bird of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. That's some amazing deliverance right there. Because not only did they get away, but the, the trap was broken. The trap was broken. It's like he's he's saying like, you know, it was kind of like a double deliverance. Yes, they, they tried to set the noose, but God broke it. Yes, they tried to set the trap, but God broke it. They were closing in on me, but God broke it. He let you get away and he broke that snare. He broke it because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And then in verse eight, he says, he says, and this really got my attention, our help. This is the blueprint. David is letting us know this is the blueprint for the snare. If you're in the snare, this is the blueprint. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And I just have to pause on that because we serve an amazing, all-powerful God. No other God has that kind of power, that just his name, his name, he, he didn't even have to do anything. He didn't have to send any fire. There was no military needed. Just give him my name, Jesus. Just give him my name. Our help is in the name of the Lord. No other God is that powerful. The name Jesus, G at the name Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's letting us know the name. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. We're on earth. There's nothing on earth that we could be going through that our almighty God can't get us out of this earth that he made. He made it. So yes, there may be the making of the snare, but we serve our Lord, our Lord God is the snare breaker, draw near to him. He is the snare breaker. Amen. Amen. In closing, I want to leave you with these lyrics and it has a little slight remix to it. It says, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. And when you draw near, he's a snare breaker, almighty refuge, my secret place, if it wasn't for your grace, oh my God, that is who you are. Amen. Thank you, God. And thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Whew. Amen. Rich. Amen. Praise you. Go ahead, girl. Fantastic. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Open up your line and worship the Lord. Praise him. Praise him for that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Praise him. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for using her, Lord. Thank you for the outpouring that, that, that she gave evening. to us under your power. Thank you, Lord. Yes. God. Yes. Lord yes. Restore, yes. renew, revive, replenish her, God. We pray in the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank yes. you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. What an encouraging yes. word. What a strengthening word. Yes. What, a, what a confidence building word. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. You yes. serve God. Continue to pour out your spirit upon her in the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for the gifting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Yes. I, I know y'all were blessed. Yeah. I know you had to be. Powerful Thank you, Sister Glory Tracy, for making Glory wonderful, God. wonderful, Glory wonderful Glory work. You, I don't know if I stopped Glory. the, I did not stop the recording. It's all right. Let the praise Thank you, Jesus. Thank Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Glory to God.